And welcome to a video on the sun, the light of all life, within our solar system, of course. With it comes the light of each new day. Its light nourishes plants and other producers or autotrophs. Its heat melts the ice and war keeps the planet warm. Its heat also provides warmth for all living things. Not just animals, but plants, fungi, and even bacteria. Of course, by now, we're all familiar with the sun. But not many of us know that the sun is in fact a star. And like most other stars, it is mostly made up of hydrogen and helium gas. Mostly hydrogen, by the way. The sun may look like it's on fire, but it's really not. The gases that make up the sun are in a plasma state, and so it re they release a lot of heat and light energy. The surface temperature of the sun is just over 5,500 degrees Celsius, but the sun's core temperature reaches way over 10 million degrees Celsius. The sun is the most massive object in the solar system. I mean, just look how big it is in this image over here compared to the other planets. I mean, they, it makes them look tiny. The sun is about 1.4 million kilometers in diameter. That's big enough to fit 109 Earths across the surface of the sun. The sun has a mass of about 1.9 nonillion kilograms. If you didn't know, a nonillion is about 30, well, it's not about, it's exactly 30 zeros. That is a lot of zeros. And if I had to give you an estimation of how much Earth that would be, or the mass would that equivalent that much mass, it would be as heavy as 333,000 Earths. The sun consists of about 99.8% of all the mass in the solar system. Like, that's pretty much all the mass, right? Because only 0.2% is left to share amongst all the planets, their moons, everything, all the asteroids and natural belt and everything in between, including all of us on planet Earth. Is, that's only 0.2%. The sun takes everything else. And that's hard to believe at first, but if you just look at the size of the sun, it becomes a bit easier to understand why it takes almost all the mass. The sun lies at the center of the solar system. The sun formed there 4.6 billion years ago, and everything else formed within the sun's gravitational field and started to orbit around the sun. This happens because the sun is so heavy and has so much mass that it bends space-time around it. And so the other planets, the other objects, are locked in an orbital motion around the star, which is the sun. The sun radiates huge amounts of energy every second. The energy that the sun radiates is referred to as solar energy. Solar energy is mostly a combination of heat and light energy. The light energy that reaches planet Earth is used by producers or autotrophs like this plant in a process known as photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, plants and other producers are able to convert light energy into chemical energy, which is used as food, not only for them, but for other animals too, right? If you're familiar with the food chain, you know that herbivores rely on plants for food, and then carnivores and omnivores rely on other animals and plants for food too. So that energy moves from the sun to the producers, to the consumers, which are your omnivores and your carnivores. The heat from the sun provides warmth for all living things on Earth as well. The sea lion here basking in the sun is enjoying the, the, the warmth provided by the sun. Next time you're on the beach and you're having fun with your friends or your family, just remember that this, the heat and the light you experience on the planet is thanks to a star that is currently at the center of the solar system that you live in. 150 million, year, million kilometers away from you right now. So next time you're enjoying your time in the sun, show the sun a little love, a little appreciation. It does a lot for us. I hope that you found that interesting and enjoy that. Never stop learning. Stay awesome. Till next time.